to her. And, and with regard to truancy, juvenile justice, and I'll tell you, this is a classic situation. Salvador is a 15-year-old boy. Now, Salvador wasn't the sharpest knife in the block. He, was, he may have been mildly mentally retarded. He had no friends. These are peers, siblings, parents, grandparents. He had no real friends of his own. The only friends he had were actually friends of his older brother, 16-year-old uh, Chris, who was in juvie. Salvador came to the, the reason I saw Salvador was because the judge was at his wit's end. Salvador had run away from what we call the juvenile ranch three times. So he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. He was supposed to stay in the ranch, but he, would do, he wouldn't stay there. He would run away, get caught, and then get put into, into juvenile prison. You do that three times in California, you're looking at California Youth Authority. So he's, here he was talking about putting a 15-year-old kid who really hadn't done that much wrong into a, the California Youth Authority because he was hanging out with gang members, because of the nature of his offenses, and then the fact that he was uh, basically defying the court's orders. So uh, uh, Salvador is, I don't know, if you, can you see the pointer or not? I can't see the pointer. If I can't see it, that's not a good, so, okay, so can you see that? Okay, mom has uh, one, two, three, four sons by one, two, three, four different fathers. He has no hard connection with any of his stepfathers except for Erasmo, 25 year old, who, by the way, was deported to Mexico uh, two months before I, I saw Salvador. Salvador uh, has very little green in his life. As a matter of fact, the only thing he learned anything from was a teacher at the ranch, Miss Hernandez, and from a grandmother on his mother's side. His mother had a drug problem. That's that flag there, as did most of his stepfathers. What we discovered, though, in the process of drawing this map with Salvador was that he had a 21-year-old brother, Luis, in Bakersfield who ran a tire shop. And he had a heart, mind, body, and soul connection with this older brother. So instead of sending Salvador to the California Youth Authority, we sent him to live with his brother who loved the kid and whom the kid loved and he was going to learn to, to, to work in a tire shop. Now, you know, that's maybe that, that story doesn't make 60 minutes, okay? Maybe it's not a, you know, a tearjerker for the, for the end of the, the news on Friday. But the point is, is that this is a kid that we did not send to a, a detention. We did not incarcerate. We did not make worse. We did not criminalize. He did not end up as one more of our statistics, only because we took the time to learn who he was. And who he was is who he is connected to. And that's the, basic of the, that's the basics of the model. Nothing fancy here, folks. Simple. Anybody can do it. But you have to care about the kid in order to do it with the kid. Once you've learned to do it, by the way, you can read them just like this. And if you see one with no red, you know you're in trouble. If you see one with no green, you know you're in trouble. If you see one with no yellow, you know what you know. It, it just helps you know what to do and what your resources are. And rather than going to a, necessarily to a program or to an institution or to a government agency or to whatever, you go to the natural resources in the child's ecology. It's community-based interventions, cost-effective, effective, and they first, they do no harm.